No, but I think we have uh, mental health uh, adjudications where if you are adjudicated and you're committed, then you're somebody that would, would potentially be out of circulation. I mean, I think he obviously was a well-trained individual. There were these flags when he was training. He did go to the hospital. I think the question is, is, is why wasn't he uh, committed beyond that? We'll probably figure out uh, going forward. But uh, clearly, this is a guy that's very dangerous because he's got the training, and then he seems to have had a breakdown. Yeah, but if the red flag, why do you not think the red flag law, a red flag law, like the one that's in Florida that we have seen been used because multiple he already, times? Because he already had there. firearms. He's a well-trained individual. Um, I think the, the idea that he was just out, I, mean, I think these are things that he probably had. So in this case, I'm not sure. I think an involuntary commitment, though, would have kept him off the street, and I think that would have probably done the trick. But if he had these concerns over the summer, I mean, he was saying that he was hearing voices. We don't know if it was voluntary or involuntary. We just know that he did go to a facility, a medical facility, for about two weeks. I mean, you look at the red flag law in your state. That is something that it was passed before you were governor. But when you were running, you said that you would have vetoed that. Do you not think it's been effective in your state? But that that's a different situation than a mental health. So, so we've always had, and I've always, if you're not mentally competent, uh, to, to own a firearm, that's something different than red flag. What red flag is, is people would go in and say, you may be a danger. So you could have someone lodge a complaint. Different states do it differently, oftentimes with not adequate due process. But I would say that's different from the mental health. I think most people agree that if you're not mentally competent, uh, with rights come responsibilities, and, and exercising the rights means you have the it, mental competency. So I don't think it's an issue with red flag. I think red flag has been abused because people can just lodge a complaint. Sometimes they'll take somebody's uh, firearms. And here's the thing. It's not even Second Amendment as much as a Fifth Amendment due process issue. Can you take someone's property without having an adjudication? Uh, so, so I think it's different. I don't think it would have mattered. In this case, I do think a commitment an involuntary commitment would have done the trick. I think there are questions about what it, whether it would have been a factor here. Obviously, we're still learning more about this, but I mean, this is a law that you have in your state. Do, does it work in Florida? Well, in this, in a situation like this, it, it would not be Just not generally, be does it work in the state of Florida, though? You know, I, I, I was not something that I supported because I, I, I was concerned about the due process uh, rights of, of individuals. Now, our crime rates at a 50-year low. I don't think it's because of that. I think it's because that we've supported law enforcement. Uh, we have strong laws to hold criminals accountable and put them off the street. So I'd say if you look at why is Florida's crime declining while it's going up in places like California, I think it's probably more for our overall approach than that. If you don't think it's effective in Florida, you don't think it's contributing to those to those lower rates, why is it still in place? Why don't you move to repeal it? I mean, because, you've got a Republican supermajority. Because the Republicans passed it in the legislature before before I was governor. I mean, they they all, still they all to, voted. To repeal oh, right, it. but they all voted on it. I, I was a candidate at the time. There was um, different restrictions that I thought violated the Constitution. So I said I would have vetoed the bill. It passed overwhelmingly. Uh, and there's not an appetite amongst them to re reverse their votes, basically, and what they did just a few years ago. Has any of it, be, since being governor, changed your opinion on how effective it is? I mean, there is a Polk County Sheriff, Grady Judd, who you are very familiar with. He's a conservative. He's a supporter of yours. He thinks these red flag laws in Florida are actually very effective. Well, I, think, I think you have different, uh, different perspectives on that. I mean, I think Grady and some of the other sheriffs like it. I think some others have said that it's, it's not something that's effective. But, but Grady, understand, he's a big supporter of the Second Amendment. So he is not using that in a way to try to fridge people's rights. Uh, he's following due process, and he's going about it in a way that does respect that. I think you see how some of these things get put in other states. And um, it's more of just an end run around the Second Amendment because they just don't like the underlying right to begin with. So point blank, though, do you think that red flag laws are effective generally? I don't think there's been data to suggest the red flag laws have been effective. I mean, even I, in Florida, I, I don't, I don't think. I mean, I think, I think it's anecdotal when people say this or that. Um, but I think what's ultimately effective is holding people ac accountable, either through mental adjudication if they're if they're crazy or uh, convicting them when they're committing crimes. I mean, a lot of the people that commit crimes. I mean, obviously, a shooting like this catastrophic, a lot of people. The typical uh, uh, crimes that are being committed where one or two people may get killed, they don't get as much press, but it's almost always somebody who's been in the justice system multiple times, and then they finally commit a really serious offense. So identifying those feet and holding them accountable when they're committing crimes, that is the way you reduce the crime rate. So it's safe to say a President DeSantis would not sign any kind of national red flag law? And no, no, I don't think that'd be appropriate at all.
What's well, your what we're going to do, we, we, well, two things. I think, I think the mental, mental health issue in our country, part of it is we do need more institutionalization. There are some people who are dangerous to society. A lot of them get put back on the streets. That will require more resources, but I, but I think that that's appropriate. And it's not, this is obviously a, a very sig- serious. There's other crimes. You talk to people in, um, in, in jail, sheriffs. A lot of the people that end up in the justice system have mental problems, and so we've not done a good job with that. Now, on the, on the other side, on the crime, we're going to hold people accountable. If you commit a gun crime, you're going to go away for a long time. If you're committing, if some of these prosecutors in these blue states are letting people out... this guy had out, no, the, no are, previous history with any kind of gun yeah, crimes. Yeah, but if you look at most seen. of the crimes that are committed in this country, it's people that have been in the justice system before and have gotten a slap on the wrist. That's happening all over this country, uh, and we will hold people accountable. But about this situation specifically, what would you do? I mean, he had no prior criminal background. But he had a mental... He got referred to a mental hospital, so, so we're going to... So if it's well, not well, a red gonna, flag law, which there is not well, one in Maine, what's gonna, the mechanism gonna, for taking the guns away from someone who says that he's hearing voices and is threatening to shoot something up? The mental is not about the red flag. When people are adjudicated, if there's a, a commitment mentally, then that is something that means, okay, you have to have responsibility to exercise rights. Uh, it's not the same thing as a red flag. On, uh, but the red flag is for if there's troubling behavior, if someone's saying that they're hearing voices, you know they have guns, you could... I mean, that is what the red flag law in Florida does, and, the, and they no, can go that, to a not, law enforcement not, not source. Not quite that, but I, but I think when you're talking about the mental, you got to be serious about, okay, recognizing warning signs, you have to have uh, systems in place. And we actually do a pretty good job of this in Florida, where you see that, because we've had situations in the past where you take this stuff seriously. But you have uh, a and red you don't flag just, law. That's not, that's not what it is. It's, it's for, like in schools, if you have somebody that's making threats, we, we take those very seriously. And I think what happens in these cases is you see that there were a lot of warning signs and people didn't act on them. So you have to act People on them. People did act on them. And that's, that's why he went for two weeks to a medical facility, because the other reservist with him reported that he was having issues and threatening to shoot up the base. Okay, and then what happened, right? Did they, did they follow through? That's why my was question is if a red more? flag law would be helpful here, and you're saying you don't think it would. You mentioned mental health resources. We hear a lot of that from Republicans after a mass shooting. But what specifically would you do if you're president with that funding? What's the program? How much money is it? What does that actually look like? I'd want to have more uh, uh, facilities for involuntary commitment. I think that we used to do higher levels of involuntary commitment. The pendulum swung a lot to the other direction. I'm not saying it needs to go all the way back where it was, but I do think that we need to recognize that there are some people whose behavior is a danger to community and danger to society that right now are getting put back on the street. Uh, and I'd want there to be a mechanism to, to do that. I think, realistically, you, know, you have to have the resources in place and the facilities in place to do that. So instead of taking someone's guns away, you think putting someone in an in, in institution is, is the solution to what we saw happen in Maine. Is that right? If he was institutionalized, he would not have been able to commit this, this offense, 100 percent. I mean, that's, that goes without saying. Um, if somebody's back on the street, then they can always uh, b- uh, hurt somebody. You and it about- doesn't mean that you just have, you know, it's not like, like, I mean, what, you take one firearm, like they can't get others or they can't use other things to be able to harm people. When people are this, I mean, they can do a lot of damage, especially someone like that that has military training. Yeah, I just think some people would raise questions about, you know, you're talking about his rights if you take guns away, but if he's being institutionalized. But I want to well, talk no, about... But, but, that, but there's a process for that, too. I'm not saying you don't have a process for that. I'm not saying you just snap your finger and do that. Well, we we have a long history... A process for that. Well, we have had a long history in this country of handling mental health in different ways. I think now we've gone a little bit more liberal. I think you see that uh, affecting a lot of problems that we have in society. And so, but that, if he had been involuntarily committed then clearly this would not have happened. You can't say that with anything else. Well, I think people would say, is that the solution or is it is it something with restricting gun ownership? But I want to talk about Israel because... But you can't, to... though. If, if you have been adjudicated mentally, you are not able in this country to I purchase that a is firearm. The federal, yes. That is the federal law. Is there any gun restriction that you would sign into place if you were president? Any law restricting gun ownership? Restricting Second Amendment rights? I'm going to uphold the Constitution. So I I think the most important thing is to stand with Israel, both publicly and privately, and back their ability to wipe Hamas out, go to the hilt, uproot the tunnels, do everything they need to do so this never happens again. That's the most important thing. Uh, And I think that's pretty much what they want. 
Now, I don't think it's necessarily America's fight. I think we should support Israel, uh, how we get involved. Now, clearly, we have an interest with the hostages that are there, some of whom are American, and I would work with Israel to be able to recover those folks. Uh, and I'm not sure what Biden's using those people for. I do know he's got people in Iraq and Syria who are being targeted by, by Iran. They're kind of just sitting ducks. Uh, I'm not sure that that's the best policy either. So what's the best policy, removing troops from Syria or ordering a U.S. military response to that? Well, I think... What's the rationale for them? I would only have them there if there was a clear American interest involved. Uh, I don't know the Do Biden's that there is I don't one? know the Biden's articulated that, but let me just say this as president. But, if I mean, somebody harms a U.S. service member, harm one hair on their head, uh, they will have hell to pay uh, if I'm president. We're not going to let people take pot shots at our military members. Uh, Iran should know that. Anybody should know that. We are going to defend our people. And that would be a U.S. military response? It means we will defend our people and we will do what we need to do to say, you don't mess with American troops. Well, you have to mar marshal assets that we have. A lot of this stuff would be clandestine. You got to work with the Israeli government uh, to, to coordinate to see what you can do. But those, uh, those hostage rescue efforts are, those are very sensitive things. Those are very high risk maneuvers. But clearly, when we have Americans that are being held by a terrorist group, uh, we would marshal resources to be able to rescue them. But not even just the hostages. I'm talking about the hundreds of American citizens who were in Gaza, and of course, they can't get out now. Egypt is not letting anyone out. Israel, of course, is not letting anyone out of Gaza. What would you do to get those Americans who were uh, yeah, living no, in a war I mean, zone? Obviously, I would, I would want to help, just like we helped in Florida. There were Americans that were stuck in Israel. They couldn't get out. Uh, we ended up bringing almost 700 home. Uh, we're all Americans, and most of them were Floridians, and we were folk, but, but we didn't do only Floridians. We understood that there's others that needed. But I think the interesting thing about what I saw, because we've greeted the first flight that we brought back, 271 people, yeah. 91 children. So you literally are having families come out with their dog, their kids, and then, yeah, they're very happy to see my wife and I when we greeted them. But one of the ladies told me, she pointed to her six-year-old daughter, she said, her, and they're from Florida, Daughter just kept saying, Mommy, I don't want to hear the rockets. I don't want to hear the rockets. I want Florida. I want Florida. So we were able to get that done. But what would you do to get the Americans out of Gaza, though? Well, I would I would give them transport. If, but, uh, you know, I, I, but I, need, I would to need to, to know the, the intelligence. There? I, mean, I would, would need to know like? the intelligence. I would need to know the, the battlefield. I would need to know all that information. But I would definitely let it be known to Hamas that uh, uh, harming Americans is very high risk for them and that they should, they should, they should cough them up. Well, look, I mean, at, at the end of the day, to me, I'm about results and I'm about outcomes. I mean, Donald Trump's well documented the different the different things in that regard. Uh, for me, it's who's going to be able to deliver the results. I'll be able to do that uh, as the president. Uh, now, he did did some things I'll give him credit for, but he also promised things that he didn't deliver. So the question is, is moving forward, uh, how do you actually get America on the right track? How do we reverse this decline? And, and I think we need a new leader, someone that can serve eight years, two, two four-year terms, and someone that's going to be ready on day one to really be energetic, have some vitality and some vigor, and get the job done. But that's not answering the question about his character. What do you make because of it's Donald not Trump's a concern, character? It's not a concern of mine. I mean, I think, Why is it not a concern? Think, You're running against him because you clearly believe that you should be president over him. Well, that's because I think I'd be a better president than he is. But, I mean, I don't need to, to take uh, pot shots I mean, at his character. I mean, some people like to do that. I focus on pot shot. The why, character why, of the president matters. Why I would be a better president, and I think the reasons are, is because... I have a demonstrated record of delivering on 100% of my promises like I did in Florida. I'll be focused. I'll be disciplined. I'm not going to be distracted. It's not going to be about my issues. It'll be about the American people's issues day after day. And we have the prices are too high. The interest rates are too high. The border is wide open. Our military is not strong enough. Uh, we have crime in the cities, a big, big bureaucracy run amok. We have all these problems. We need to solve them, not talk about them, not but slogan near about them. why is that message not resonating with Republican voters? I think, it, I think it is. When you get on the ground in, in, in Iowa, for example, so th there's 99 counties. Uh, the tradition is to do all 99. They call it the full Grassley. I've done 83 of the 99. A lot of these rural counties, there'll be counties where there may, may be a few thousand people. We'll get 100 people to show up um, at an event. You shake the hands. You answer the questions. That's not something you'll necessarily get to see in polling. That's something that comes out when people make their decisions to caucus. So we're doing it the right way. I'm going to be the only candidate that does all 99 counties. We've just started similar in New Hampshire on there on Tuesday. I was with Governor Sununu. We did seven different events. 
uh, town halls, house parties, retail stops. That's what you got to do. You got to show up. You... Donald Trump's not willing to show up. He's missing in action right now. He doesn't show up. When he does show up, he reads off the teleprompter for 50 minutes, and then he gets back on the plane and goes home. Uh, as voters are ke more keyed in, as we get closer to the holidays, uh, you're not going to be able to get away with, with not putting in the work. Uh, so we're going to put in the work, and we're going to get the job done. Well, right now he is getting away with what you say is not putting in the work. I mean, he's leading the polls. Yeah, but that's because he's the most famous person running, 100% name ID. He's the person people know. When you actually drill down in these early states, clearly he's got some that will vote for him no matter what. But there's a lot more that aren't going to vote for him in the primary. Then you got a lot of voters who they like his policies, they like a lot about him, but they are willing to vote for somebody else. So it's incumbent upon a guy like me, go out and make the case. I'll tell you, we were in South Carolina last week, did a, did a bunch of rallies, shaking hands after. Every other person said to me, you flip me. Now, I didn't ask them what that, who, who they flipped, but I'm pretty much sure that it, they flipped from Trump to me. So that's what you have to do for the Are next three months. Are you moderating the way that you're running? Because you seem to be running to the right of Donald Trump initially, signing that six-week abortion ban, signing that permitless concealed carry. You were making sure you finished your legislative session in Florida before. Now you're talking yeah, about but, going but for the voters who don't constitutional carry like Trump. is, that's like a majority of the states have that. That's a, that's a normal mainstream no, Second the, Amendment position. To, you're so, deflecting but I think, the point I think, in of itself I think is that you were initially is, running to the right, and it seems like you're moderating. Is I, that the I case? I don't think I've changed. I think I am what I am. I think I'll run the same now like I will next, next November. Um, but here's the thing. I'm more reliable on policy than Donald Trump and Republican voters, you know, I think are starting to see that and we'll, we'll show that. Uh, I've delivered more uh, on American first principles than anybody uh, in the country and not just this most recent legislative session, all through my time as governor. So, so we'll see that. But here's the thing I think is true. I have shown an ability to be bold, to, to do big things, but then to actually win independent voters. In Florida, we won by a million and a half votes. I mean, we won independence by, by 18%. Donald Trump would not be able to do that. And we need somebody that's going to be able to win the election. Very important that you get that done. And you don't think Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden? I, I, I don't. I mean, I think that um, I, I think that. Would you endorse him if he is the nominee? Well, I've already said that I signed the pledge. I'm supporting yeah, the Republican do you, nominee. Do you think it's real? Well, for me, it is. I mean, I think when, when you sign something, I know some people don't, don't do that. But when I agreed to participate in the debates, I knew what that meant. I knew whoever comes out of that process. But here's the thing. I'm not just going to take my ball and go home. I'm going to do, follow the process, respect the people's will. I think ultimately, you know, they'll make the judgment that, that I'm the best foot forward, and I think we'll get it done. But look, at the end of the day, um, I'm not going to just cry in the corner. I mean, I think Biden needs to be defeated, and I think a Republican needs to do it.